Dwarves, babies, vampires, and something rotten in the air. My name is Beaton, and welcome to episode 10 of... This is Trash Can Tidbits. It's really my genuine pleasure to present these random facts each week, as you might expect. I've been having a blast doing this series so far, and always compiling all these things together. I'll admit... It does get a little hard keeping it down to 10 or sometimes even 11 each week, but I sincerely hope you've been enjoying this much as much as me. Well, let's get right to it. Here we go with fact number one. Did you know that Lara Croft was the first video game character to be headlined in a rock concert tour? In 1997, rock band U2 were huge fans of the Tomb Raider series, and they prominently featured clips of Lara on their Pop Mart Worldwide tour. Perhaps as a thank you to the band, when the Tomb Raider movie was released in 2001, U2 wrote and performed a song for the movie soundtrack called Elevation, which won the Grammy Award for Best Rock Performance. Fact 2. Did you know that despite Gimli the Dwarf being one of the shortest characters in The Lord of the Rings, the actor who played him in the films is actually the tallest of all the actors in The Fellowship? John Rhys Davies, also known for playing Sala in the Indiana Jones franchise, stands at six foot one, a far cry from the height of the character he plays in the Lord of the Rings franchise. Fact three. Did you know that many of the audience members on Judge Judy are just paid extras? Although one specific extra bears mentioning just because it's just plain weird and really, frankly, not that special. In one 2017 episode, comedian and actress Amy Schumer was sitting in the audience. What astonishes me the most is that she just sits there all casual and stuff. This one is even weirder than the one unfortunate audience member who was kicked out of the room by Judge Judy herself. Fact 4. Did you know that voice acting legend Tara Strong provided the voice of Tommy Pickles' brother Dill on Rugrats? Apparently, her audition, which consisted of her making baby noises and crying, went so well. One of the female producers who had just had a baby began lactating right then and there. You know your baby impression is so good when something like that happens. Fact 5. Did you know that the live-action cutscenes in the PC game Star Wars Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2 were the first live-action footage of lightsaber action since Return of the Jedi? The game came out in 1997, which was 14 years after Return of the Jedi's release in 1983. Fact 6. Did you know that one of the LEGO video games makes fun of a popular meme associated with it? In the PlayStation Vita version of LEGO Lord of the Rings, an Easter egg can be unlocked with Legolas, where with enough tries he will say the line, They're taking the hobbits to Isengard! which was made into a music video. And even an achievement in the console versions of the game is called Taking the Hobbits to Isengard, which can also be unlocked by actually traveling to Isengard with one of the Hobbit characters, paying further homage to this meme. Fact 7. Did you know that although the character of Padme is nowhere to be seen in the video game version of Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, one line left behind by Anakin does make reference to her. Whether the game producers forgot she was not in the game, or if the line was left in there by accident, one of Anakin's lines in the final duel with Obi-Wan is, You've turned Padme against me! Fact 8. Did you know that the character of Dr. Sam Loomis in the Halloween franchise, played by the late Donald Pleasance, is named after one of the main characters in the Alfred Hitchcock movie, Psycho? Coincidentally, the esteemed horror franchise also stars J.B. Lee Curtis, who is the daughter of Janet Lee, the star of Psycho, who famously dies in the film's shower scene. In fact, that was the main reason Jamie was hired for the first movie, is that her mother is indeed a famous scream queen. Fact 9. Did you know that Salem's Lot was the first Stephen King project to be adapted for television? The original plan was to make it into a feature film, but there were two other movies about vampires being released at the same time. Dracula and Nosferatu the Vampire. Eventually, the project was rewritten to be a TV miniseries. Ironically, the story of Dracula was the primary inspiration for Stephen King to write Salem's Lot, as he was a teacher at the time and taught it in his reading class. The idea of vampires in America crossed his mind, and he wrote the book soon after. Fact 10. Did you know that former Sex Pistols frontman John Lydon, aka Johnny Rotten, also appeared on an episode of Judge Judy? 
He appeared as a plaintiff in 1997, suing Robert Williams, one of his former drummers, for breach of contract. In true Sex Pistols fashion, Leiden's behavior during the episode was rather, shall I say, typical. But his case was enough to win over Judge Judy, and he actually won. <sighs> I swear, if Sid Vicious had been alive to see this, he would have been laughing. And there we go for this week. Thanks for watching, as always. You got any facts or requests you want to share with me? Feel free to drop some in any comments. And also, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and ring the bell to be notified for any new videos. See you next time.